Hi folks, Buck here. So i uh, got a little tutorial here um, and the goal uh, this time is to get a white border around uh, an image or a series of images uh, with a copyright or photographer byline um, on the border itself um, and vertical even. Um, and the goal is to do it completely in Lightroom uh, without the help of Photoshop. Now that said you can see here that uh, these are PSD files and these are my completed uh, image files um, but it, it really doesn't matter they could be RAWs, JPEGs, TIFFs it, it, it really doesn't matter for the sake of this tutorial so pushing ahead uh, we're going to just say that uh, the editing is complete and now we go into the print module here and uh, we're going to um, have to come up with a template. Now I've already come up with a template to use and saved it and I've called that border prep. So here's what it looks like and these are the settings that I used. So first I'm going to go down to the very bottom and um, I used custom file dimensions of 11 by 8.5. That's uh, standard uh, you know uh, page size for a print um, and it seemed like as good a place as any to start so that's what I used uh, and you could use anything here and actually you know if you don't crop your photos uh, as part of your editing then probably a really good dimension to use would be anything that relates to uh, the the size of your output images straight out of the camera so that'd be you know usually a three to two ratio so you might use uh, um, you know six to four or 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 twelve to eight or something like that in any case I used eleven by eight and a half and that'll work for what we're doing here now going back up to the top I'll just go down the list here of what I used and uh, of course you can play with these and do whatever you want this worked for me though so rotate to fit and I used rotate to fit because uh, well we'll see why I had to do that later but um, that way even these uh, portrait oriented photos uh, they'll just flip over to the side uh, so that they'll fit into that same screen all right so um, there's rotate to fit then I'm stroking the border with white at the maximum which is 20 points okay that's going to be my white border that I'm going to use around these photos um, the margins they're all set to zero so that I'm using the maximum amount of, uh, of space here. The rows and columns, there's one row and column, it's a grid of one and I'm going to use a height and width that is maxed out at the full eight and a half by eleven. I've turned off the guides because they're really not doing anything for us here. Uh, well, they're not, not doing anything for me anyway, so um, in, in this particular instance I don't need them the page background color. Now I've set this to black because I want my border to be a consistent size and I want to be able to see that later on. Now uh, I, I tend to crop my photos. So these photos that we're looking at here, they're going to be different sizes in this screen and if I click on one here uh, you might see the the borders shifting uh, from image to image uh, at least slightly. I mean none of them are square uh, but they're not all consistent uh, with an exact 3 to 2 ratio. There's a pretty tall one, you know, relatively to the way we're looking at it. But in any case, um, so I'm going to want the, when I complete my mission here, I'm going to want these uh, white borders all to be the same size. Now, if you don't mind having white all the way around, well then the easiest thing to do is just change this to white and now you're going to have a big fat border all the way around it's all going to be white and it's all going to be real easy to deal with if, if you don't if you don't you know care about that so uh but i'm going to go back to having mine black here cuz i want to play with that a little bit and uh at least for this tutorial and then uh sliding down here print sharpening that's you know whatever works for you you can play with that on your own custom file dimensions uh, I've got that checked. We, we set that earlier to 11 by 8 and a half. And here's the thing we're going to print to JPEG. 
and that's how we're going to get an, a, a file out of this thing. Okay, so that said, those are those are my uh, those are my settings for this. And then once I had those settings dialed in, then uh, I went to print, and I went to um, uh, uh, new template and saved it out. And uh, I've already got mine saved, so I'm not going to name this and create it, but that's what you would do. And then you'd have this, and you could use it over and over. You just go into your user templates, choose it. Here's a, another one that I created some time ago that I use for various purposes. And click this, and you're back to it. Okay, so that makes it real easy, and uh, you should do that if you're going to use it more than once. Okay, so I'll choose this one and this one, and that way I have one... Uh, oriented uh, uh, as a landscape and the other as a portrait so that we can see you know how that works out for us and I'll print to file and uh, at this point now it's uh, gonna ask for a file name you're gonna have to drill down I already did this before and so it defaulted to this folder but you're gonna have to drill down into your hard drive system to find where those original images were because you're gonna want to be that's where you're gonna want to be with this so uh, that's where I'm at and uh, my folder hierarchy the way that I work this thing is I tend to separate uh, the various versions of my images for a particular shoot they're all arranged in the in the date uh, and the name of, of what was going on on that day and there's JPEGs, PSDs, RAWs, TIFFs and so now I'm gonna type here for a name fish hatchery and if I was exporting or if I was printing to file one image it would just take that one image and stick it right in here in this folder because I've got multiple images selected it's going to create a folder and stick them in that folder uh, named fish hatchery dash one dash two dash three and so on in the order that they are in my film strip which is the order that I shot them in so that said I'm gonna hit save and it will print out to file those two images and then I go to the library click on that folder the the uh, overall folder for that day right click synchronize the folder it finds the two images synchronize it it'll bring them in and there they are and now they're in fish hatchery folder which was created underneath the uh, the main uh, folder there for that date along with all those other folders that I mentioned earlier okay so now I'm gonna go into the develop mode and we can see here I now have the images with the white border and the black border and if you don't care about that black border then skip over this next part but um, I want to get rid of it so I'm gonna go into the uh, crop overlay and I'm just gonna crop it away so I'm gonna bring this down to here and bring this up to here and you know you could do a lot better job uh, depending on how you know important it is to you now once I've got that cropped away if all of my images were cropped exactly the same so if this is exactly the same size then all I have to do is hit previous or hit this one and then shift click all the rest of the images here that I'm working on and I'd get the sync button like this and then I just hit sync and I want to make sure that I, I don't need any of this stuff except crop so I'd make sure crop is selected hit synchronize and it'll crop them all exactly the same way so now here's my other image this one was probably a little bit fatter and you can see that the border on the top and bottom to me from here looks a little bit skinnier than it does on the sides but I'm gonna live with it okay just for the sake of, of moving on here but if all the point is that if you've cropped your images during the editing you could get you know kinda of weird results here that are gonna require individual cropping at this stage if they're all the same size if they're all straight out of camera then it makes it real easy because uh, then you don't have any cropping to do at all you can set it all up in the print module before you do this you got no black borders then and you're good to go but anyway 
All right. So next I'm going to take and rotate anything that needs rotated, and this image needs rotated. So I'll right click on it, rotate uh, right, and it stands it up. So now I've got a landscape image and a portrait image, and I'm going to export these. So I highlight them both, right click, go to export, and now I'm in this module. Now you're going to go through, you're going to, you know, put your settings however you like them. I'm going to put it in a subfolder called completed JPEGs in this case. Uh, th that's going to be underneath the folder that, uh, that Lightroom found them in, which is that fish hatchery folder that was just created. Uh, I'm going to rename it to the file name, which means I'm not going to rename it at all. And uh, it's going to be output as a JPEG. Uh, I'm going to limit the file size to 400K. Resize to no bigger than 900 uh, pixels wide by 850 pixels tall, whichever comes first, and a resolution of 96 pixels per inch because I'm just trying to get this done. I'm going to sharpen it for screen, standard amount, and again, you can play with all this stuff on your own. Here's the important part, the watermark. So, uh, depending on what you got going on here, uh, we're going to go to Edit Watermarks and it opens up uh, this dialog box and I've already preset this to photo by buck cash. Uh, this, this is a watermark that I made uh, prior to this video and you can see over here that there are different settings you can use and that allows you to anchor it wherever you want left, right, bottom, top, corners, middles, wherever. Uh, you can rotate it so that it's uh, oriented in whatever way you want it to orient. You can change the size of the thing. You can, uh, so there you go, you can change the size of the thing. You can uh, change where it's positioned horizontally and vertically. You can uh, change the color of it. Uh, up here you can change the color of the uh, the text uh, there's black there's white and of course that blends in a little bit too much uh, I think I used a dark gray whatever all right then you can also put a shadow on it and you can control the opacity of the shadow uh, where the shadow falls its radius all that jazz or you can just shut it off and go straight text all right in any case, I've got the, you can change the font. I've made my settings. Once you say, once you do that, and you go to save it, it'll ask you for a name, and you save that preset, and then you can use it over and over and over, real easy. Now I've already made mine, so I'm going to cancel out of that, cancel out of this. Mine I called small right dark side, so that's what I choose. I hit export now it does the work it pops out those two files I'm gonna go back into my library module so we can see the results and right click synchronize folder it finds the two new files I synchronize again and those two files will be in fish hatchery completed and if I go into the develop well I just look at them right here let me bring this out of here whoopsie daisy and now I've got the file with the border with my um, phot photographer byline on there and here's the portrait size and we can see how that fits I could have done a probably a better job with that and remember this got skinnier when when I went through the cropping proce procedure and so there wasn't quite as much room on here for this so you have to you know set this thing up carefully and once you do uh, everything should work out just fine for you all right that's it